The Persona 5 story continues in Persona 5 Strikers, much like its previous spin-off for the fort entry, such as Persona 4 Dancing All Night and Persona 4 Arena is a canonical sequel to the original. It just doesn't cover Royals anymore. Sorry, Kasumi fans. Unlike the original, it's an action RPG combined with the friendly gameplay of a Muso game. This has worked in the past with games such as Zelda and anime such as Gundam, as well as uh, the majority of the older Dynasty Warriors titles. Here, it mostly works, with the game being real-time and can be seen as an approximation of how a Shin Megami Tensei game would work with a real-time combat system. You do access jokers and other characters' unique persona, which deal with magic attacks, as well as weapons upgrade, armor, and other things that fill through your typical RPG. Combat is frantic with dozens of enemies on the screen, as well as uh, AI partners that don't get in your way. You can switch between the different members of the Phantom teams on the fly and control them. For example, you need a heal character, you can to switch to, say, Morgana and heal whoever needs it. You also get easy to memorize combos which are in line with the Musou lineage. They're unlocked through defeating a certain amount of foes. What keeps the repetition at bay is the weapon slash skill unlocks which go from normal such as HP unlocks or the unnecessary such as unlocking weapons at the store. The player is tasked to go through various dungeons dubbed jails as opposed to castles in the original and to be the boss. You also have a cooking system which is much like crafting but ingredients can only be bought at the store such as a supermarket. The recipes can be unlocked by going to towns, visiting restaurants, and food segments. These are a few uh, gameplay graphs set up with the game. One is the weapons being unlocked by completing segments. It's, it's probably done to extend the game length. It makes sense to do it for more powerful weapons in the game. It's not to, just to get the next tier of weapons. To prove on the next title, the game should naturally unlock weapons to restore progress. Another issue, mechanics-wise, sometimes the camera just can't keep up with the action, and it gets stuck on walls in the narrow dungeon. It'll take 40 to 50 hours if you go through the critical path. Now, onto the graphics. The graphics do a magnificent job of replicating a Shigenori Sojima's style, and even the user interface because it exudes style much like its predecessor. The game runs at a smooth 60 FPS. It was reviewed on a PS5. Frame rate didn't buckle, no matter how many enemies are on the screen. The only flaw here is a large amount of aliasing, but the art helps uh, overcome that technical hiccup. Localization is better than P5, with one of the characters using a bit more colorful language, and some references that don't feel out of place, such as memes. Pun also returns to, at the expense of Morgana, being a form of a cat in a reality as well. Overall, as usual, inspired look job. Music is also great with the upbeat acid jazz by Soji Maguro. Fusion of hip hop, jazz, and rock with some lyrical style that keeps the combat feeling fresh. Unfortunately, a lot of it's reused from the original, but there are some new arrangements of themes like Taking Over and Blooming Villain, which are rocked up to go through the more action oriented game. The story is set six months after the original Persona 5. The Phantom Thieves disbanded after the incident with the political candidate Shido concluded. It involves the Siri like Emma system, which is made by the tech company Medis, which has been causing people to bend to its will. The Phantom Thieves then reunite along with the new character, Sunkichi Hasegawa, a detective who is investigating the incidents. It all winds up being a, an entertaining road trip to. Japan and not just Tokyo. The leads such as Joker and the crew have been fully developed but have to fight symbolically antagonists that remind the player of what they were before they unleashed their personas. This makes P5 Striker's story about the antagonist they encounter as well as some new characters along the way. It helps the game's story not to be stuck in the rut a lot of spin-offs get up into where the mains are going through the motions but allows them to speak as fully developed characters and helping the supporting characters out to grow themselves. 
Overall, Persona 5 Strikers gives enough fan service and is a worthy continuation of Persona 5 with only a few flaws, such as a somewhat fuzzy camera and some padding. But it is a great spin-off for, say, a sequel in both the Musou series and Persona Subcrunch. <laughs>